Welcome back to Let the Quran Speak. In the past few weeks, we've been looking at the five pillars of Islam, and so we've been doing them one by one. Uh, we've come to the fourth, and the fourth is about fasting. So, Brother Shabir, um, maybe you can tell me what fasting actually enta entails for a Muslim, or what is actually meant by the fourth pillar of Islam being fasting. Yeah, well, as it is not um, near the month of Ramadan as we speak now, um, we can speak more generally about um, the uh, the manner in which fasting um, benefits a person overall. Uh, fasting entails really staying away from food and drink and sexual intercourse uh, in the daylight hours during the month of Ramadan, which is in the ninth month of the of Muslim calendar. But fasting more generally can be done in, at any time of the year voluntarily uh, mm -hmm. by Muslims. Uh, it is recommended that uh, one who really wants to get into this um, may fast uh, on what are referred to as the, the full moon days, uh, so the, the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the month. Um, and uh, one can also fast on Mondays and Thursdays because it is reported that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself, used to fast on Mondays and Thursdays uh, because uh, he said that the deeds are, are of a person are presented to God on these days and he wants to be fasting at the time when the deeds are presented. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned eating, drinking, and refraining from sexual intercourse as well. Are those sort of symbolic of, of the sort of temptations that we, we experience in life? N not only uh, temptations, because temptations are many, but mm -hmm. uh, these uh, um, are in reference to some of the most uh, basic uh, natural inclinations in a human being. Okay. Um, as much as we're alive, we have uh, the need to eat and, and to drink, to sustain ourselves. We have the natural inclination to procreate. But uh, in, in these things, we are similar to the rest of the animal kingdom uh, in that they have the same desires, they have the same needs. If this is all that defines a human being, then how are we different from animals? What about the faculty of reasoning and intellect that uh, we have a greater share of than, than the animals do? Uh, sh shouldn't this be reflected in our character, in our being, in, in, in our way of dealing with uh, the world and with other creatures of God? Definitely these should. I mean, the intellect should be reflected in what we do. Mm -hmm. But uh, often we can see that people uh, refuse to follow the intellect and they succumb to the baser uh, desires in, in a human being, the desire for food and drink and sex. People kill for these things. Uh, and, and if we can control these desires in us, if we can master these basic needs, controlling them and, and regulating them, well then we can give uh, more of a chance for the intellect to rule us rather than to be ruled by our baser needs. So are you saying that this is the, the main point of fasting? Then? To me this is one of the greatest benefits in fasting. Okay. You know, when, when God says in the Quran that he's given you this institution of fasting so that you may uh, be pious or you may be aware or you may Achieve self take heed. Yes, it can be translated in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so to, to me one of the greatest ways in which this is manifested is in the willpower that the fasting person develops, the kind of control that the person achieves over his or her own self. Uh, the, the, the sense in the, in the end that yes, it's, a, it's mind over matter. I have a mind and, and I am uh, matter and um, uh, my mind dominates and controls the matter that, that makes me up, mm -hmm. that, that, that I'm made up of. Mm -hmm. this, this seems to be a sort of, it could almost be seen as a very selfish um, sort of desire to, to, to master one's own self. Are, are, there other, are there other aspects of fasting that sort of connect with God? Well, uh, I, I want to comment on this perception that it might be a selfish desire to master one's own, own okay. self. But uh, it, it is important that uh, as much as we uh, think about uh, the world in general, that we also think about the responsibility we have to ourselves, because that translates on how we affect the world around us. Uh, if, if we turn ourselves into good citizens, then we become helpful to everyone around. And, and fasting helps to turn us into that sort of uh, person that will be helpful to, to, our, to others. Uh, we spoke about the baser desires, in fact, uh, producing harm to others, not only for the per person involved. Uh, so if we control those basic desires and if we channel our thinking and uh, our actions towards uh, making them beneficial towards other beings, well then fasting will help us to do precisely that. 
in, in terms of, uh, the, more generally, how does the fasting affect others? Well, one of the things that many Muslims experience uh, is that when they fast, they feel more sympathy towards uh, those who are poor and, and hungry. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the, the Muslim who is fasting is uh, uh, hungry by, by his or her own choice and in his or her own uh, determined practice. But uh, for others who might be hungry due to drought and famine and general poverty, uh, it, it's not a choice. They just simply have no food. And uh, the, the Muslim who is fasting uh, has the, the, the opportunity here uh, to, in a way, sympathize with those people and feel the same sort of hunger that the others do feel. And what about the connection to God? Uh, this is um, in, uh, one of the ways in which fasting, in fact, benefits the individual and in that it brings the person close to God. When a Muslim is fasting, the Muslim remains uh, continually conscious that uh, he or she is doing this for the sake of God. And uh, that brings into one's conscious awareness the continuing uh, presence of God. And when one does this, does this as a repeated exercise, eventually the imprint uh, comes to be fixed in one's mind that God is uh, very much a part of my own reality. All right, thank you for that. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will look at the question of whether Islam is in need of a reformation.